Hello, welcome to Storytime with Miss Griffiths. For this story time, I'm going to read The Giraffe, Apelli and Me. I'm going to read it in shorter videos because it's a little bit of a longer book and it doesn't actually have chapters, but it's one of my favourite Roldar shorts. So, this is the story here. The Giraffe, Apelli and Me by Roldar. So let me introduce you to the characters. So we've got the giraffe, the Pelly, which is the pelican, the monkey, Billy, and this guy, which we'll meet a little bit later in the story, the Duke of Hampshire. So we'll meet him a little bit later. Not far from where I live, there is a queer old empty wooden house standing all by itself on the side of the road. I long to explore inside it, but the door is always locked. And when I peer through the window, all I can see is darkness and dust. I know the ground floor used once to be a shop because I can still read the faded lettering across the front, which says the grubber. My mother has told me that in our part of the country in the olden days, a grubber was another name for a sweet shop. And now every time I look at it, I think to myself, what a lovely old sweet shop. It would have been. On the shop window itself, somebody has painted in white the words for sale. One morning I noticed that for sale had been scraped off the shop window and in its place somebody had painted sold. I stood there staring at the new writing and wishing like mad that it had been me that had bought it because then I would have been able to make it into a grubber all over again. I've always longed and longed to own a sweet shop. The sweet shop of my dreams would be loaded from top to bottom with sherbet suckers and caramel fudge and Russian toffee and sugar snorters and butter gumballs and thousands and thousands of other glorious things like that. Oh boy, what I couldn't have done with that old grubber shop if it had been mine. On my next visit to the grubber, I was standing across the road gazing at the wonderful old building when suddenly an enormous bathtub came sailing out through one of the second floor windows and crashed right on the middle of the road. What is going on? A few moments later, a white porcelain lavatory pan with a wooden seat Still on it came flying out of the same window and landed with a wonderful splintering crash just beside the bathtub. This was followed by a kitchen sink, an empty canary cage and a four poster bed and two hot water bottles and a rocking horse and a sewing machine and goodness knows what else besides. And it looked as though some madman was ripping out the whole of the inside of this house because now pieces of the staircase and bits of the banisters and a whole lot of old floorboards came whistling out through the windows. Then there was silence. I waited and waited, but not another sound came from within the building. I crossed the road and stood right under the windows and called out, Is anybody home? There was no answer. In the end, it began to get dark, so I had to turn away and start walking home. But you can bet your life nothing was going to stop me from hurrying back there again tomorrow morning to see what the next surprise was going to be. When I got back to the grubber house the next morning, the first thing I noticed was the new door. The dirty old brown door had been taken out. And in its place, someone had fitted a brand new red one. The new door was fantastic. It was twice as high as the other one had been, and it looked ridiculous. I couldn't begin to imagine who would want a tremendous tall door like that in his house, unless it was a giant. As well as this, somebody had scraped away the sold notice on the shop window, and now there was a whole lot of different writing all over the glass. I stood there reading it and reading it and trying to figure out what on earth it all meant. The Ladderless Window Cleaning Company Get your windows cleaned without a lot of dirty ladders leaning against your house. Hmm. I tried to catch some sign of, or sound of movement inside the house, but there was none. 
until all of a sudden, out of the corner of my eye, I notice that one of the windows on the top floor was slowly beginning to open outwards. Then a head appeared at the open window. I stared at the head and the head stared back at me with big, round eyes. Suddenly, a second window was flung wide open and of all the crazy things, a gigantic white bird hopped out and perched on the windowsill. I knew what this one was because of its amazing beak, which was shaped like a huge orange coloured basin. The pelican looked down at me and sang out, Oh, how I wish for a big fat fish, I'm as hungry as could be. A dish for a fish is my only wish. How far are we away from the sea? We are a long way from the sea, I called back to him. But there's a fishmonger in the village not far away. A fish what? A fishmonger. Now what on earth would that be? asked the pelican. I've heard of a fish pie and a fish cake and a fish finger. But I've never heard of a fishmonger. Are these mongers good to eat? This question baffled me a bit, so I said, who is your friend in the next window? She is the giraffe, the pelican answered. Is she not wonderful? Her legs are on the ground floor and her head is looking out of the top window. As if this all wasn't enough. The window on the first floor was now flung wide open and out popped a monkey. The monkey stood on the windowsill and did a jiggy little dance. He was so skinny. He seemed to be made out of furry bits of wire, but he danced wonderfully well. And I clapped and cheered and did a little dance in turn in myself. We are the window cleaners, sang out the monkey. We will polish your glass till it's shining like brass and it sparkles like sun on the sea. We are quick and polite. We will come day or night, the giraffe, the pelly and me. We're a fabulous crew and we know what to do and we never stop work to drink tea. Or the windows will glow when we give them a go, the giraffe, the pelly and me. We use water and soap plus some kindness and hope, but we never use ladders, not we. Who needs ladders at all when you're 30 feet tall? Not the giraffe, nor the pelly, nor me. I stood there enthralled. Then I heard the giraffe say to the pelican in the next window, Pelly, my dear, be so good as to fly down and bring that small person up here to talk to us. At once the pelican spread his huge white wings and flew down on the road beside me. Hop in, he said, opening his beak. I stared at the great orange beak and backed away. Go on, the monkey shouted from up on his window. The pelly isn't going to swallow you. Climb in. I said to the pelican, I'll only get in if you promise not to shut your beak once I'm inside. You have nothing to fear, cried the pelican. We'll find out if he got inside next time.